is Dr. Brian Prax, Chronic Care Charlottesville, and the topic for today is bone demineralization, otherwise known as osteopenia. So osteopenia can be detected on an x-ray, often in a chiropractor's office, but the scan to know for sure is going to be what's called a DEXA bone scan. That's the tool that you need to get. Osteopenia is when you start losing density in your bones. When it gets really bad, we call that osteoporosis. And again, it's going to be the DEXA bone mineral density scan that you need to get for that. Um, way more common in females than it is males, obviously way more common in the elderly population. The number one cause of death in seniors is fracture, so this is a really, really important topic. What I want to cover is how to reverse it. Is it even possible? I suppose so, but the best way to do it is not going to be through Fosamax and other dangerous medications, commonly prescribed but dangerous. It's the lazy approach, it's the lazy way, it's trying to go after something by treating its symptom. The best way to, to get this to reverse is to prevent it in the first place. So the way we want to talk about that is in the early years, we want to do exercise, weight-bearing exercise, even walking, but certainly something with gravity. I'm, I'm liking swimming, but that's not going to help out with bone density. Gravitational things, walking, uh, jogging, um, lifting weights and resistance type exercises. So exercise, critically important, will push more uh, uh, strength and more density into those bones. Now the next thing is, is everybody knows about calcium, but there's other uh, elements that need to be in there as well, magnesium, phosphorus, and others in order to make up a bone. And they'll often prescribe both vitamin D3, the sunlight vitamin, which I do think is very, very important, and calcium. Now I've seen calcium supplements actually create calcification of things like hearts, aortas and other uh, you know soft tissues so I really don't <clears throat> like the concept of supplementing and over supplementing with calcium but the good news is is it's in your diet or it should be in your diet <clears throat> so things like fish we want to get them as small as possible and it turns out the best source of calcium uh, turns out to be sardines uh, salmon etc Tofu is another way of getting calcium. Broccoli, kale, but they say kale must be sautéed. I have about four or five times a week just because I like it. I have it with eggs. Uh, eggs are another good source of vitamin D. So that's the other thing, vitamin D. Eggs, here we go again, sardines, cod liver oil, ugh, but it is a very good source of vitamin D3. If you supplement with D3, and by the way, I would highly recommend it. Without even knowing you, I would say at least 2,000 international units a day. I have some of my patients who are deficient start out at 10,000, even 20,000 a day, oftentimes for a month, and then bringing it down to a, uh, you know, an average uh, supplementing of about two, and some of my patients 5,000 a day. But D3 is critically important. Fosamax or not, you got to have D3. You got to have calcium. So we talked about exercise uh, and good nutrition. The other thing we need to be very aware of is smoking. I know it gets such a bad rap, but another thing that smoking does is it demineralizes the bones. And lastly, for now, um, drinking. They say two drinks or less a day. Obviously, none is better, but drinking does demineralize the bones. So hope that helps. That's the, uh, the topic on osteopenia, osteoporosis. If you've got it, do all you can to mineralize those bones. Go back, review. I hope this helps. Please leave a comment below and we'll talk to you soon.